Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're not really going to be doing an unboxing or an unbagging as much as an exploration of this uh, series of game books by Mike Lambeau. These are available through Amazon.com, um, uh, as they are as they are obviously books. Um, these are purely solo, as stated, solo war game, and the two we're looking at is Battles of Normandy and the Race to Bastogne. Um, Here's what you get. You get a book, but we're going to kind of look through it without giving too much away, but just kind of get a feel for what you're getting in this. These have been highly, highly uh, recommended, highly received. Um, the production value is on them is really great. Um, uh, they're just uh, a little meat for a solitaire gamer. So let's take a look at the inside, the contents, and how these work. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. To subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. So we'll look first here at the Battles of Normandy. And you flip it over here, and it says As part of the D Day landings in Normandy in 1944, the British 6th Airborne Division took part in Operation Tonga to capture and destroy several bridges on the Orne River and Cane Canal and to secure important villages in the area. Bad weather and difficult landing conditions meant that it, the units were scattered and often had to fight in smaller, weakened forces. Fortunately, the German resistance on this occasion was, on this occasion, inefficient. In Battles of Normandy, you will be commanding whatever British units happen to be available in order to take strategic positions on the map. German forces may not act with the full efficiency that the German army was known for, but they will nonetheless put up a fight. So this was this one's a sequel to Fields of Normandy, and there are several um, in this series that are World War II, and then there are some others that deal with other. Uh, I think there's a Vietnam one, um, and uh, a, a few other battles. Are all definitely war game themed, um, but let's just like like we would the rule book. We'll just take a look here inside. So I hear all the games right now, actually. And I was uh, incorrect. We have Fields of Normandy, Battles of Normandy. Oh, Ghost of the Jungle. That's a Vietnam, I believe. Battles of Medieval Britain. Uh, Beaches for the Brave, The Race to Bastogne, which we'll look at. Hostage Rescue Squad. That sounds interesting. And then Battles of the English Civil War. So, um, got to start with a table of contents. This is a uh, 36, about 38 page book. Uh, it's bound, the square binding. So um, you may have to press it down to get it to lay flat if that turns out to be necessary. And we start with the background. Uh, same stuff that was on the back there. Um, he says he's been playing, this is Michael Lambeau saying, I've been playing many war games for many years, mostly solitaire. I've increasingly found it hard to find the time for a long, complex uh, games on the tabletop, though I still enjoy many of the classic solitaire games people know and love. The main advantages of a book-based game as this are the speed of setup, ease of play, and the ability to take it with you wherever you might fancy a shorter play session. So again, this one builds off Fields of Normandy. It's not a sequel. Rules are different, but it's aimed at the same audience. So uh, how this, how the book, how the book works, and I'm assuming this is going to be on how all of these work. Um, it's a solitaire war game. You play the game, the book will provide the enemy. The system that runs the German units will thereafter be called the AI, artificial intelligence. You'll need a pencil, eraser, and three standard six-sided dice. The idea is that you draw right on the pages lightly in pencil, allowing you to position units, and then erase and move them around the map. This also allows maps to be replayed multiple times. Other options for play are to photocopy the maps, draw on those, photocopy the maps, use cubes or similar tokens for the units. And, of course, you can create dry erase versions, uh, lamination, um, take a photo of the maps on a tablet, and use the edit function to draw and erase if you have an iPad or an Apple, excuse me, an um, Android tablet. Uh, so it's your book, it's up to you. So, obviously, um, given that it's, it's sold as a physical book uh, versus a PDF, it would be very hard to license a PDF. It would be nice, I guess, if the PDFs of the maps were available um, somewhere. Um, so that you could just download them and do them. Um, because, like I said, the book doesn't necessarily flat, which means photocopying will be kind of a strain, but, uh, but not, not totally impossible. So let's just take a look through it real quick. Uh, suggest, uh, got suggested annotations of how you'd mark on the, 
on the grid, on the hex grid, where your units are, you got a rifle squad, a machine gun team, a piat team, sniper team, so on and so forth. Units have taken cover, you underline, uh, half tracks, Germans, so on and so forth. So, uh, so it's not a roll and write, it's more of a draw and write. But let's take a look here. We've got rules for attack, defense, and movement. Uh, rifle squad attacks with 1d6, machine gun team 2d6, half track 2d6, and they defend their defense is three. Um, so those are the the main squad types that are being going to be in the game. Um, can't really review it because I'm not going to be playing it right now. I do hope to do at least one of the scenarios as a video at a later time. Be on the channel if you subscribe as directed to the channel, you'll get notified when new videos come up. Uh, as your terrain chart, basically, you know, just basic terrain. Uh, the actions makes just to see how the how the AI works. So we have line of sight. It says there's no complex line of sight in the game. Units do not have range statistics. A unit can see into any hex on the map, potentially uh, fire at a unit in that hex. However, it's limited by the t by its target's total defense value is calculated above under attacking. In order to score a hit on a target unit, the attacking unit must roll at least one attack die, which equals or exceeds the target unit's defense stat, plus the number of hexes that the target unit is away from the attacking unit. So one of the examples here is you have a rifle squad in this hex and you have a German squad in this hex, the machine gun team. Uh, so they want to they want to attack the machine gun team. The machine gun team has a basic defense of zero, but this is increased by three as it is three hexes away from the rifle squad. Note intervening terrain features such as woods and buildings do not affect, affect this. It is also in a woods hex, so the defense is increased by another one. So that's interesting. It's assuming that you can you can just reach it. Um, the total defense range for the machine gun team is therefore a 4. The rifle, the rifle squad attacks with 1d6, so it needs to roll a 4, 5, or 6 to hit the machine gun team. So it's equal to or uh, greater. Um, okay, should they miss and the machine gun team fires back on its turn, the rifle squad will have a base defense of 0, increased to 3 because 3 hits away, and by another 2 as it's in a building hex, giving a defense of 5. The machine gun team attacks with two six-sided dice, Needs to hit with a five or six, so uh, obviously you're going to roll two dice, and you know you just need you get hits based on the number of dice that that actually make the hit. Have the rifle unit taken cover. The German machine gun team would also need a six to hit with either its dice, and the rifle squad's defense would be in that case a six. So the R would be underlined if they took cover. So operating the AI. So for each unit, uh, we're just going to kind of summarize here. You're going to roll two six set of die to consult the AI action chart below. Reproduce next to each map. So here we have the AI action chart for half track, machine gun team, and rifle squads. What they're going to do gives their attack and defense ratings here, as well as uh, what their actions are going to be. And clarifications and tiebreaker notes, which unit to attack, which unit to move towards, which hex to move to, so on and so forth. It gives you directions for those. Here's some examples of different actions that you'll do and carried out by the AI. So it goes into great detail to show it up to you. And then set up for a game, your map selection. The maps are a rough representation of geographical location of the battles. You're free to select any map to play. They're all the same size, use the same rules, although German reinforcements and events can change from map to map. So you select and place German units. They have set a uh, number of points to spend and you can, less, you can make it lesser for an easier game or harder. Increase the number of points the Germans have. And then you randomly uh, roll the die and subtract it from what's available. So they have 10 points. You'll roll on a 1 to 3. You get a rifle squad, 4 to 5 machine guns. So you get a half track. And you take away that amount of points from the total that they have. Uh, I think you'd want to... Uh, maybe rule out a half track after you got like maybe one or two though because they don't eat up all the points and you're just battling a bunch of half tracks but that might be fun all right place your units after the german units are placed and then here's your full turn summary which is mark the next space on the turn tracker roll place german reinforcements roll in the event chart operate the ai activate each british unit in order and then enjoy the story as it unfolds so now we're going to have the different scenarios and the maps so I'm going to kind of put my hand on here so you don't get everything out of it because I don't want anybody to 
you know, copy from this video, but uh, map one is regrouping, freshly landed troops, bewildered and battered, try to regroup at the objective points. Often they could only gather, they could gather only a fraction of their strength before engaging the enemy. So, um, um, here's again the uh, unit uh, AI table, uh, your units, what they can do, and the various, they note the terrain effects on each page. So basically you're going to open it to this and then you can play it. Like I said, with a pencil, you can photocopy this, you know, create your own, which is a blank terrain. You can just create your own war game there. And with the missions that are included in this one in particular are eight. There are eight different missions. Securing a village, Battle of the Mervil Gun Battery, Securing the Bridge on the Orne, on to Ranville. So eight missions included in the book. It's a nice, it's, it actually kind of opens up pretty well. Um, the good thing is the map is on the side that would normally sit flat and the part that doesn't, you know, sit flat on the table, the part that doesn't, that kind of has a, maintains a curl is the chart, which you can refer to, or you can just break the binding and, uh, and uh, do these. So I'm, I'm very interested in playing these. So uh, Battles of Normandy has eight missions and the race to Bastogne has 12 missions. So this one actually has training in it. Starting out, these are two easy missions, and it's got medium, medium, medium hard, medium hard, 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 very hard, extremely hard. The final mission is extremely hard. So again, this is uh, US forces against the Germans. So this covers, um, puts you in charge of armored units from the US Army in the Battle of the Bulge in 1944. World War II. You'll be commanding small groups of Sherman tanks, priest mobile artillery, and Greyhound armored cars in order to clear routes across the freezing countryside to Bastogne with the U.S. 101st Airborne or surrounded by the enemy. The game does not claim to be entirely realistic and some concepts have been simplified for gameplay purposes. I'm sure some of it would not stand up to detailed historical analysis, but that is not the intention. The game is representative of the general situation at the time. So, similar to the other game, except now we have different unit types, different rules uh, for those units. Uh, so the German seems uh, over time the uh, the uh, instructions have improved a little bit more, been fleshed out. I don't know that the rules have necessarily improved, but the way that they're presented in the book have been improved. It looks like, and that's assuming that this one came after that one. And if not, then I'm just I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, this looks like a very interesting series. Um, I noticed the artwork has improved a little bit. The, um, here's a player aid that you could photocopy if you needed to. So like uh, mission one's easy. Uh, it's a larger map. Uh, we've got some arrows on here for, for uh, deployment zones, I believe. Uh, a little more 3D effects here on the terrain tiles, not 3D fully, but like beveled hexes and things like that. So um, let's see the German units. We have Panzers, Infantry, 251 half tracks, and minefields. So those are their units. Uh, and then their two hit chart, um, which actually looks like the combat may have actually changed in this one because here you've got a seven plus to hit rolling 2d6 so it does actually appear that combat so you it's not necessarily the same system between each book it's like he custom designed it for each scenario or each uh, genre yeah in this in this one you roll two six-sided die and check the to hit value so kind of like an old rpg you have a to hit faco or whatever and so you've got hit values that can be modified um, but it's not the same as this guy attacks with two dice and if anything hits, you know, any, either of the dice, you know, get the, get the number, then you're good. This is the 2d6 bell curve kind of roll. And one successful hit results in the German target unit being removed from play. So, so again, this one has larger hexes. Let's go to, yeah, so this is going to be a shorter, possibly a shorter game. So when you get all the way down to mission 12, which is extremely hard, it's also 
got large hexes compared to uh, the Battles of Normandy, which was a lot more hexes on the page. Either way, I am still looking forward to playing this now, and this is interesting. While no, by no means necessary, some players might like to copy, remove this page, and make counters. So if you're feeling crafty, you can take this, you could uh, decoupage it onto cardstock, scan it, print it onto label paper, stick it onto some um, uh, stick it onto some uh, card, cardstock or chipboard, and then cut out your counters. Uh, make stickers, stick them onto plastic chips. Any number of ways you can make counters out of these. If you, if you prefer to use counters versus uh, drawing and, and, and text notation. So that is a quick look at two games in this series by Mike Lambeau, Race to Bastogne and Battles of Normandy, each uh, distinctly different from one another. Um, and I assume that uh, be you know distinctive from each of the uh, uh, each of the other games in the series will have their own will have their own flavor. So thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.